Hi, I'm Kevin, um, presenting on capsule network today, specifically the paper Dynamic Routing Between Capsules. So the motivation for this paper is that um, regular convolutional neural networks, they have their uh, certain issues. So first off, in, when you use max pooling, although it reduces the spatial size of images and feature maps, uh, you're losing valuable information. Um, also, if, if even if you don't use max pooling, uh, neural networks don't really implicitly model entities and relationships between entities. So what capsules do is they add extra structure to the network so that uh, models and entities are actually, uh, or entities are modeled as vectors and then these vectors are able to route by agreement. Uh, so you can model the relationship between these different features and entities. Um, yeah, so, so this is an example of where a CNN might have issues. So uh, image on the, uh, the image on the left, uh, this is a regular face. If you give it to a CNN to classify if it's a face or not, it'll probably say, yes, this is a face. But on the right, uh, the CNN will, say, will see this and say, OK, it has uh, two eyes, it has a mouth, it has a nose, and this is the shape of a face. So it might be a, it, it would probably say, OK, this is a face, even though a human would say, that this is not a face, right? So each of these entities, each of these uh, parts of the face, there's no relationship between them that is modeled by the CNN. Uh, so in order to fix this, capsules, uh, capsule networks uh, take inspiration from computer graphics. Uh, so in computer graphics, we give a computer different uh, objects with their own parameters, instantiation parameters. So we say, OK, there's a rectangle at this coordinates at this angle and there's a triangle at these coordinates at this angle. We call a rendering function and then we produce this image. Uh, so, so capsules try to do the opposite. They do inverse graphics. So basically you give a capsule network an image. You call inverse, a re inverse rendering function which is learned through the capsule network and we're trying to get these parameters. Right? We're trying to get the different objects in the image uh, and the different poses of the objects. Right, so here's an example of a very basic, basically what uh, capsules look like. Right, we give it an image, inverse rendering, and then we get different capsules. So capsules are are basically just vectors uh, with pose information. So here the uh, blue vectors are the tri capsules for triangles, and the gray vectors are capsules for the rectangles. Um, the length of a vector uh, represents whether or not the uh, object ex uh, exists in the image. So at each point, we have a different capsule. And we say, OK, there's, an, there's a triangle at this point. So this vector is going to be long. It's going to be close to 1 in length. Uh, the, the orientation of the vector determines the different uh, per instantiation parameters of the vector. So in this case, uh, the blue vector is pointing this direction because the angle of the triangle is in this direction. And then so, so in this one, like, is it true that there are like uh, 25 capsules? Are there 50 capsules? Like, well, it would depend on, on, on how you do the, basically each pixel should, yeah. ideally, each pixel would have its own capsule, yeah. right? Or each uh, patch in the image will have its patch, uh, own caps. So that's like kind of abstraction, but in a way <coughs> that each location will have these two kind of Right. Responses. Exactly. Yeah. Or this is just two, right? In yeah. in practice, it could be many more. Okay. All right. So, in order to uh, explain how to get how to make basically a capsule network, we first look at uh, how a traditional neuron works, right? So we input several scalar uh, scalars, so x x i's. We do a weighted sum between each scalar and a learned set of weights, which are learned discriminately. Right in a neural network, and then this weighted sum is passed through a nonlinearity, so a sigmoid function or a ReLU, and then we output a scalar. Right, that's a traditional neuron. Now a capsule is much more complex. So instead of scalars, we're inputting vectors. These vectors go through an affine transformation. So basically, we say each one of these vectors is a different lower-level capsule, and we want to output higher-level capsules. Right. So each one of these vectors, we say, we're going to multiply it by this weight vector, and then this result is a prediction vector. So according to this lower level vector, 
where does it predict the higher level feature or higher level capsule will be opposed to the higher level feature? So it's a new idea, is it a metric or is it a vector? It's a vector. vector. So it's, a, it's a capsule vector or a prediction vector, mm -hmm. I should say. Yeah? Uh, how long, how large is it? Yeah, you sort of said. Yeah, the vec yeah, you could have it any length, right? But in the paper, they use 8 and then 16 for different items. All right, then we use these prediction vectors and we get a weighted sum. Uh, with this uh, coupling coefficient. So this coupling coefficient is learned through the routing by agreement. So if, if these prediction vectors agree with each other, this CI will be higher. I'll explain that later. Then this, uh, this sum is passed through a nonlinearity, the squash function in the paper. Um, it basically ensures that the vector length is between 0 and 1. Right. So one, the closer to 1 it is, the likelihood of this feature existing in the image and then it, this is the output vector which is the capsule the upper level capsule uh, this is the basically just what I just went over in the last two slides uh, so the main difference is, is the capsules deal with vectors they input vectors and output vectors and then the capsules also have this affine transformation right which a regular neural network does not have all right, so now, in order to learn this, CI, this coupling coefficient, we have to go routing by agreement, which is an important part of how and why capsule networks work so well, or work well enough in these experiments. Uh, so this is basically, conceptually, how routing by agreement works. So let's say we have two higher level entities we want to model. So we're having two higher level capsules, so J and K. And we have many different lower level capsules, which are Pass, which are their information is getting passed to these higher level capsules. All right, first we do the affine transformation, so we get prediction vectors, which are these different dots, right? Each one of these is a different prediction vector from a so different capsule. Let's see if you have a vector, you multiply, you do the dot product with the vector, mm -hmm. you get a scalar. So W, I, this affine transformation should be a matrix. It's a matrix, yeah. Matrix. yeah. Yeah, so it's a matrix, so it results in a vector. Right? So each one of these points is a different uh, prediction vector. So we want to set, we want to know how much of the information from this capsule, this lower level capsule I, is going to be routed to these upper level capsules. So I's prediction vector is located here. So we see, okay, so the other prediction vectors are clustered in this area of capsule J. And capsule I's prediction is very far away from that. So it actually disagrees with the other lower level capsules. So that means it's not going to want to send its information to capsule J because this lower level feature is not agreeing with the other lower level features that this capsule even exists. Right? So we're going to decrease CIJ. Right? And now we do the same thing for capsule K. But in this case, it is actually close to this cluster. So we say, that capsule I's information is going to be routed to capsule K, so we're increasing CIK. All right, this is basically just the, uh, how it conceptually works. In the paper, they have their own algorithm. Yeah, can you actually yeah. go back? Yeah. Because this is very important, very yeah. complicated. So just explain again. What All right. Talking. So we have higher level capsules, right, which describe higher level features. And we have lower level capsules, which describe lower level features, right? So the lower level capsules, let's say they're the nose, the eyes, and the mouth of a face. And these higher level capsules could be, this could be a, this could be a, let's say, a, it could describe a car, capsule J can describe a car, and capsule K can describe a face. All right, so each one of these prediction vectors says, okay, since the since let's say the mouth is in this area, we can assume, the prediction vector will say, then that means the face will be in this pose, right? And then you could do the same thing for each lower level feature. So each lower level feature has its own prediction of where the higher level feature will be. All right. Then uh, if you want to know if a higher level feature exists, many of the lower level features have to agree with each other. So the eyes have to be in the correct position, uh, and the nose has to be in the correct position, the mouth has to be in the correct position, in order for all of them to agree that there is a face in this in a certain position so in this case let's say eyes of the nose let's say i represents a nose um, and capsule k represents the face 
uh, all of uh, the, its prediction is in agreement with the other predictions of the other lower level capsules. So capsule K, uh, so they all agree that capsule K or the, the object represented by capsule K exists. So it's going to send more of its information to capsule K. Uh, so in the paper, they have their own routing algorithm. So we input the prediction vectors. R is the uh, number of iterations, and L is just the, the lower level capsule layer. L plus one is the higher level capsule. So first we initialize all the log prior probabilities V, I, J to zero, since all cap lower level capsules are equally likely to route their information to an upper level capsule. Then for each iteration, what we're gonna do is, first we're gonna have, we're gonna do the soft max of these probabilities, so we, we get CI, which is the, basically the percentage of a lower level capsule, send, uh, how much, what percentage of, of their information they're gonna send to a higher level capsule. Uh, then we do the, the weighted sum and then the squashing function, which I explained earlier, right? And then we do uh, this last line here is the, basically it's a, a weight update. So we're gonna update the probability of sending its uh, lower level capsule information to a higher level capsule. Uh, this is done basically by this uh, scalar product. So this scalar product, if the result is large, that means the lower level capsule has high agreement with other low level capsules. So it's going to increase the probability. If the scalar product is low, then it's going to decrease the probability. And this is uh, done several times to refine the, the agreements, and then eventually it converges. But they, in this paper, they do it three times, pretty, and then you output the different capsules. Yeah. So now I'm going to basically explain the architecture they used uh, to train uh, their network. All right, so first, they have an input image, right? These are MNIST digits, so they're 28 by 28 grayscale. Uh, then we add a convolutional layer, a regular convolutional layer, uh, nine by nine filter, no padding. So the output is uh, 256 feature maps with uh, 20 that are all, each 20 by 20. Then we want to create the first capsule layer. Right, we want to. Uh, we're using basically a convolutional capsule layer. So to do this, we just add another convolutional layer, nine by nine filter. This time a stride of two, and we're going to take 256 feature maps. This is because we we want uh, 32 channels, 32 different channels of capsules. So 32 different different types of capsules, and each of the capsules are eight dimensional vectors. So we get uh, 256 feature maps. And the resulting shape is uh, six by six by 256. So we have 256 feature maps, each six by six. Mm -hmm. Then we reshape these into actual capsules, right? Because currently we have scalar activations, we want vector activations. So we reshape it into capsules. So we have 32 channels of eight dimensional capsules. And then we squash each of these eight dimensional vectors. So, so, uh, yeah. So, so is this, um we have everybody, this is part of the understanding numbers. Um, any, any question on, on this one? So yeah. does primary caps have uh, interaction with each other, or they are just different units compared to the next layer? Right, they're, they're just different capsules that interact with the next layer. Yeah. So, yeah, they're, yeah. So, how many capsules have there? No, there's there's actually, so each one of these channels, there's 32 channels, yeah. and then each one of these channels has uh, six by six yeah. capsules. So it, in total, there's actually like a, a 1,152 yeah. different capsules. So every pixel like in this one acts like a capsule. Correct, right? yeah. Because you started with 20 by 20, you did the nine by nine, and you did the stride, it reduced to six by six. Yeah. So every location of the pixel view is a different capsule. Yeah. And since you have 256 channels, then each capsule you want have a dimensional vector. Mm -hmm. So then 256 channels you divide in these 32 blocks. Yeah. Yeah, you have more questions? Yeah, so I know that you can make the image in the uh, number 32. I mean, uh, you can just say that there are, uh, there are 1100 and uh, 1100. Right, so each each channel is supposed to represent a different entity, right? So 
so the so each channel let's say it, it represents a lower level feature right uh, so this six by six each one of these six by six is the same feature just different locations in the image right so a six is a six by six so each each pixel has 256 dimension vectors right so what he's doing in this one that let's define a capsule is a like eight dimension so therefore you will have 32 of them so that, that's your yeah. yeah. So each six by six shares the range. Right. So it two don't share the weights, but six by six. Yes, yeah. the six by six share the weights because it, the, since they're the same feature, their predictions are going to be the same. The, the only difference is just the location of the prediction. Ah. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah. So once we have the primary capsule layer, we want to actually have the output capsule layer so the predictions of what digits are going to be in the in the image um, so what we do first is the the uh, prediction we find the prediction vectors by multiplying each capsule by the their weights right since these weights are 8 by 16 the resulting vector is going to be 16 dimensional um, then using these 16 D vectors we do it, the routing by agreement uh, to get the output digit capsules, right? And we're going to end up with ten diff different capsules uh, for each digit, one for each digit, right? So the output is uh, ten capsules, each with sixteen dimensions. And then the prediction of the network is just the the, the capsule with the largest, uh, no, basically the, the vector that is the longest, right? And if yeah. Yeah, maybe I think I can go slow, a little slow on this. So, right. so we already got um, the previous one, which was six by six by thirty-two. Right? right. So now you are saying that you multiply each of that eight-dimensional vector with, with eight the, by sixteen. Yeah. Metrics. So, and then you get the the how do you get these things? So what you do is, so you're multiplying each one by the matrix, and we get basically get 1,152 different capsules. Then these capsules, the routing by agreement, basically it's it's a weighted sum of these capsules for each of the output vectors or output output capsules. So we're saying, okay, we're going to do this 10 different times for each different capsule. So that's how we get 10 different vectors or 10 different yeah digit capsules. So there's a lot going on from the six by six by thirty-two. Besides just multiplying with the subprime transformation, it, it's basically you yeah. could just think of it as flattening. You're flattening this into one thousand one hundred fifty-two. Doing the transformation, so so now you have, but this is a transformation for each of the digit capsules, right? So you're going to have a uh, thousand one hundred fifty-two times ten different prediction vectors because we want 10 different output capsules. All right, and then the routing by agreement just basically uh, does the weighted sum and the squashing to get the 10 different capsules. Um, and then also onto the architecture, they added a, a reconstruction network, uh, which is basically they fully connect the digit capsules to uh, to several hidden, fully connected hidden layers. So this one is 512 neurons, 1024 neurons, and then the output layer, which is 784 neurons. And that's because the uh, MNIST digits are 28 by 28. Um, and so during training, in order to get this reconstruction, what they do is they have the ground truth digit label. And what they do is they mask out all other digits that are not this label. So in this case, uh, five was the ground truth, right? And they masked out, they basically zeroed out all these other capsules, and they used this, only the, the capsule representing the five in the reconstruction. Uh, that's just to ensure that each capsule has uh, meaningful information about the original image. Uh, so now uh, we can go into the loss function. So they use a margin loss because they want to be able to 
classify more than one digit in, a, in an image. So TC is one if the digit C is in the image. For this first term, we could basically think of, uh, so VC is, is the capsule rep uh, that uh, represents the digit C. So this first term, if, if uh, the digit exists, then what this is doing is it's making VC increase. So if VC is high, that we get a low loss, which is exactly what you want. We want a high uh, activation if it exists. Uh, and if it is low activation, then we're going to have a high loss, right? And this term basically just does the opposite. Right? If VC doesn't exist and we have a high activation, then we, we're going to have a high loss. If it doesn't exist and we have a low activation, we're going to have a low loss. Uh, then they also have the reconstruction loss. This is mainly used for regularization and to make sure that each of the digit caps has meaningful information. Uh, YI is the MNIST uh, input image, and HI is the H, uh, XI is the it's just the reconstruction. This is the normal L2 loss, and then the, just the total loss is uh, the sum of all the margin losses for each each digit plus the scaled down regularization re, uh, reconstruction loss uh, because the reconstruct they, they scale it down so that it doesn't dominate the margin loss term. So. These are the results they got on MNIST. Uh, this is the first time like capsules actually had state-of-the-art results, so that's why this paper has been so popular, basically. Um, in this first column, the routing, this is just the number of iterations that the routing by agreement algorithm uh, used. The second column is whether or not they used the reconstruction loss, and they were able to get a 0.25% error rate, which is uh, state-of-the-art. And a comparable CNN was only able to get 0.39% error rate. Um, so here are some examples of the reconstructions. So in this in this tuple here, we have uh, the label, which is the first uh, number, the prediction of the network, and then R is the reconstruction target. So what they asked, they zeroed out all except every uh, digit capsule except this one to do the reconstruction. Uh, so in these first four, we see that uh, the network was able to correctly label the uh, digit as well as the re reconstruct it pretty well. It, all it did was just remove some noise in the original image. These last two uh, show examples of where the, where the network was confused. So basically, it was a 5. This is a 5, but the network predicted a 3. Um, and then... The reconstruction actually shows us why. It gives us some insight into why it was confused. So if, if you look at it, I mean, this could be constructed as a 3, or it can be constructed as a 5, really. So, so that's, that's basically why the network uh, yeah, got so, this so class wrong. The, the, the last one, um, both is incorrect. The prediction in the algorithm reconstruction is wrong. Right, right? yeah. But the, the one there, the uh, reconstruction is correct for the prediction. Right. So, so it predicted three for each of these, but what they did was they, instead of zeroing out all of them except the three, they zeroed out all of them except the five for the reconstruction. Uh, of the, yeah, they zeroed out every digit capsule except for the five and then reconstructed from that. Yeah, I mean, that's the way they yeah. do that, right? But yeah. what I'm saying is that, uh, I see. So, so which means then, since they are during out those, so it's additional information that provided into a set of reconstruct, but it was not able to predict. Correct. Yeah. Regardless of the ambiguity. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So are uh, you saying on the reconstruction, they uh, zero out the right, uh, I mean the right digit? Right. As a predicted. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Just, just, yeah so, so they, they zero out the, the right one. So, so yeah, the, in these two, they zero out different ones. So in this case, mm. they zero out everything except the right one, which is the five, except the ground truth label. So which is the right way to do it? That's the way they trained it, right? Well, yeah, that's the way they trained it, yeah. right? But in, when they said, in this one, they zeroed out everything except the three. 
because they wanted to tell what basically why it got around. They wanted to see oh, if I it see. reconstructed the trick. Okay. That, that's good. You just want to do that. Yeah, okay, good. Okay. So, so the digit capsules are each 16 dimensions, um, and they wanted to see what each of these dimensions actually represent uh, with respect to the original image. So what they did was they perturbed each dimension separately, so between negative 0.25 and 0.25, and they saw how, they checked how this affected the reconstruction. So they noticed that they actually have meaningful, each dimension has a different meaningful uh, information that it represents. So in one dimension, it, it uh, changing the number, changes the scale and the thickness of the output reconstruction. Uh, in another one, it changed the, basically the curve on top of the six. Uh, in another one, it's the stroke thickness of the number. This one, Changes basically the skew of this of the four. Um, it also another one is uh, basically the width and the translation. It changes, and then this last one is the the curve on top of the two. That changes. So so in this thing, I mean that what they are coming at the output is the sixteen dimensional vector, mm -hmm. and uh, it's not traditionally like in the network that. And normally in a neural network, if, if you if you just change one dimension, you can't really see how that would affect. Yeah. yeah, but in this, you can actually see pretty meaningful effects by just changing one dimension. So, so in this one, like, so they give examples of like uh, two, four, this, seven, eight, nine, six, six different. Dimensions. Dimension, but then we, we don't know what the other ten dimensions. Are. Right. Yeah. And it might be that the other ten don't <laughs> actually have any information. Mm -hmm. um, so they also ran some tests on AFNIST, which is basically they they train their network on MNIST, and they test it on MNIST digits which has, which have uh, small uh, affine transformations, and they were able to show that. Uh, capsule network was able to be more robust to these transformations. Uh, they achieved 79% as opposed to the 66% for a traditional neural network. Even though they, when they trained on the MNIST digits, they were both able to get similar results on the regular MNIST digits. Um, okay, so they also ran uh, tests on highly uh, overlapping digits. So in each uh, so in this case, this is the input image, and this is the reconstruction image for the two digits. So L is the is the label. So there's a two and a seven in this input image, and it reconstructed the two and the seven. So they're in the red. You can see the two and then the seven. Um, yeah. So these are different instances where the network actually correctly segmented these highly overlapping digits, which is pretty impressive. Um, because it would be pretty difficult, I think, for a human to actually do that. So the occlusion problem. Yeah. Um, then they did some other tests. What they did was they input, let's say, let's take for example this image. Um, they input a five and a zero, and they asked it to reconstruct a five and a seven. Um, but since there is no seven, the network didn't reconstruct a seven. This actually shows that. Um, it's not, the network isn't just trying to get the best fit for all the digits, it's only getting the best fit for the digits that it can see in the image. Um, and then this last test case is where the network actually got the prediction incorrect. So in this case, there's a 2 and an 8 in this image, but the network confused it for a 2 and a 7. Uh, in this case, 
there's a, a 4 and a 9 in the image, but it confused a 9 for a 0. Um, and then they also ran some other tests on other data sets. So on CIFAR 10, they got a 10%, 10.6% error with an ensemble of seven different models of this the same network. Uh, this is not state of the art, but it's pretty comparable to what C, uh, neural, re regular CNNs were able to do when they were first applied to this data set. So that means that capsule nets actually do show some good promise. So you got C for 100, you got 70%. Yeah. So that's pretty good. It's better than so. Uh, yeah, this is it. Um, they also ran tests on SVHN, which is the Street View house numbers. Uh, they got 4.3% error, and I believe that one's state of the art. And also Small Norb, which is this data set here. It's uh, five different classes, each taking pictures at different lightings and uh, orientations and viewpoints. And they got 2.7% error, yeah. which is also state of the art. Yeah, so that's, that's OK, very good.